The ten-man team of American soldiers was silent, their bodies hugging the ground. Their camouflage uniforms mixed perfectly with the nearby bushes, and none of the Japanese soldiers from the patrol noticed them as they passed through the road. It was hot, and the thick jungle canopy did little to ease air circulation. Prudent as always, the men slowly got up and kept advancing toward the inner portion of the island, following the first principle of their mission, avoid contact with the enemy and only shoot if necessary. They were not commandos. They were the Alamo Scouts, the eyes and ears of General Walter Kruger's Sixth Army, a unit created to gather intelligence in the Pacific Islands before any Allied landing invasions. These men were taught to blend with the jungle and make nature their ally. In over 100 missions they would conduct during wartime, no Alamo scout would lose his life when facing overwhelming Japanese enemies behind enemy lines. Special Units United States Army Lieutenant General Walter Kruger assumed command of the 6th Army in early 1943. His recently created army was nicknamed the Alamo Force and would operate exclusively in the Pacific. General Kruger sought to provide his 6th Army with the most accurate intelligence available before conducting any large operation and decided to create a special reconnaissance unit tasked with gathering as much information as possible about the Japanese. The general sought to avoid fiascos in his area of operations, such as the one that occurred on Kiska Island in the Aleutians. The Navy and Army Air Forces bombarded the island for more than 20 days without knowing the Japanese garrison had already left the area before the bombing missions commenced. As if that was not enough, the landing forces engaged each other in the confusion of combat, resulting in self-inflicted casualties. With these fresh memories in mind, General Kruger created the Alamo Scouts, hand-picked volunteers eager to conduct reconnaissance operations behind enemy lines. On November 28, 1943, Kruger issued orders to establish the Alamo Scouts Training Center near the headquarters of the Alamo Force on Goodenough Island, off the southeastern tip of New Guinea. The orders stated, quote, The training center will train selected volunteers in reconnaissance and radar work. The course will cover a six-week period. Specially selected graduates will be grouped into teams at the disposal of the commanding general Alamo Force and will be designated Alamo Scouts. The remainder will be returned to their respective commands for similar use by their commanders. The Alamo Scouts Training Center General Kruger selected Lieutenant Colonel Frederick Bradshaw as the director of the Alamo Scout Training Center, or ASTC. The instructors were hand-picked from the dissolved amphibious scouts, a U.S. Navy reconnaissance unit comprised of Army, Navy, Marines, and Australian Armed Forces personnel created in July 1943 with the same objective as the Alamo Scouts. The first class began training at ASTC on January 1, 1944. Most volunteers came from the 158th Bushmasters Regiment and the 32nd Infantry Division. They were all seasoned warriors trained for jungle warfare. During the six-week classes, the men were trained in weapons, physical conditioning, navigation, communications, intelligence gathering, rubber boat handling, scouting, and patrolling. Although the men were proficient in weapons handling, they were not commandos or rangers. In contrast with these forces, author Ruth Quinn notes that Alamo scouts were trained to avoid combat unless necessary to accomplish their intelligence gathering missions. The men that expressed a burning desire to eliminate Japanese soldiers were removed from the selection process. Education, arms proficiency, and athletic frames were not determining factors in the trainee's success. Instead, priority was given to the volunteers willing to withstand arduous marches and think logically under stressful situations. Most importantly, the optimal recruits were those willing to sacrifice their lives beyond the call of duty. The scouts knew that if they were caught, there was no hope of assistance. Of the more than 500 recruits, only 140 were chosen as Alamo scouts. After graduation, the men were split into 10 teams of 5 to 10 soldiers and assigned to missions ranging from long-range reconnaissance to prisoner and hostage rescue operations. Los Negros
Lieutenant John R.C. McGowan and five men carried out the Alamo Scouts' first reconnaissance operation on February 27, 1944. The scouts were dispatched to Los Negros Island and arrived at the shore on a rubber boat. Previous intelligence had reported there was no activity on the island, but the Alamo scouts tracked down a well-fed Japanese garrison deep inside the island, where they came close to a Japanese work party of over 15 men and avoided them by blending with the bushes. The scouts then withdrew to the jungle and awaited the arrival of the PBY Catalina. Two days later, the 1st Cavalry Division landed on the island and successfully neutralized the Japanese, thanks to the accurate intelligence provided by the Alamo scouts. The success of the operation became a pattern for successive missions. The scouts would be deployed aboard PT boats, Catalinas, or submarines before the landing of Allied divisions to gather as much intelligence as possible to prepare the invasion accordingly. After Los Negros, more Alamo scouts were dispatched to Wewak and Madang on the coast of New Guinea to gather critical information about the enemy and rescue over 70 Allied Dutch prisoners. During these operations, no Alamo scout was ever detected by the Japanese. Liberating Luzon. Dr. Michael E. Crivdo, from the Army Special Operations Command Historian Office, writes that Lieutenant General Kruger decided to dispatch the Alamo scouts to Luzon Island before the large-scale landings to avoid unnecessary casualties at the beaches. The eyes and ears of Kruger reached the island during the last days of 1944 to gather intelligence about the Japanese defenders, their fortifications, and weaponry. Dr. Crivdo notes that for this operation, the Alamo scouts were mainly used as a liaison to the local Filipino guerrilla groups. Team Littlefield was the first squad ashore and led a long-range reconnaissance mission of over 56 miles to link up with the guerrillas of Colonel Marcos V. Marking Augustin near the town of Tarlac. The scouts of the Nellist team were tasked with locating and destroying several concealed artillery pieces that the Japanese planned to employ to attack the landing forces. The men, equipped with camouflage uniforms and the necessary supplies to operate behind enemy lines, infiltrated the jungle to locate their targets. After covering the target area, the Alamo scouts located the enemy emplacements and destroyed them with mass artillery fire, paving the way for the invasion force. Team Nellis then linked up with Team Roundsville and soldiers of the 6th Ranger Battalion to raid the Japanese camp of Kanabatuan. The camp was over 20 miles behind enemy lines and had more than 500 Allied troops held captive, alongside friendly guerrilla forces. It would not be easy to fight the Japanese in their territory. The scouts had trained for this and were eager to put their abilities to the test once again and save their countrymen. The Daring Rescue The Roundsville and Nellis teams approached Kanabatuan under cover of night to gather information about the latest Japanese movements near the camp. The entire area was under heavy enemy presence, and getting close to it was impossible due to the flat terrain. Instead, Lieutenant Bill Nellist decided to observe enemy activity from an outpost, a lone shack located near the compound. He dressed as a local Filipino and gained access to the hut to monitor the Japanese and provide the rangers with the best routes to surprise the hostile garrison and carry on with the camp's liberation. The ranger's commander, Henry Mucci, ordered his men to prepare for the nighttime raid on January 30th. A P-61 Black Widow night fighter passed over the compound to distract the Japanese and signal the attack. The 100 rangers, with support from the scouts and over 200 Filipino guerrillas, stormed the compound from all sides, overwhelming the Japanese defenders. During the 30-minute raid, over 500 Japanese troops perished under the accurate fire of the attackers. The Alamo scouts and the rangers rescued 511 Allied prisoners and captured over 80 Japanese soldiers. The war was nearing its end, and the scouts still had much to do. Special Forces Tab By the summer of 1945, the Alamo scouts had conducted more than 100 missions behind enemy lines and had not been detected once by the Japanese. Additionally, less than 10 Alamo scouts were injured during the numerous encounters with the enemy. None perished. While the American High Command prepared the invasion of mainland Japan, 
the Alamo scouts were considered the tip of the spear of the large-scale offensive. The men were expected to land on Kyushu Island, where more than 600,000 Japanese were stationed and gathered intelligence about troop distribution. Fortunately for the scouts, President Truman opted to drop the atomic bombs and end the war. After some months of security for key officers during the occupation of Japan, the Alamo scouts were disbanded in Kyoto in November 1945. Some scout members later managed to make their way to the ranks of the Army Special Forces. In 1988, the Alamo scouts received the Army Special Forces tab and were added to the lineage of the current U.S. Special Operators. Moreover, the Alamo scouts clearly demonstrated they were value added and how Special Operations Forces could provide unique skills to conventional forces in major theaters of operation. Thank you for watching my video. Please like and subscribe to our Doc Docs channel to find more videos about special forces during World War II. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos.